may have a solution of ordinance. Provincial governor who loaned funds to a foundation for livelihood projects. And at that time, there was no authorization to enter into that contract by the provincial board. But later on, the liabilities of the foundation were assigned to another foundation. And this time, the provincial board passed a resolution authorizing the governor to sign that assignment. Now the court said, what happens when the governor signs a contract without a previous authorization from the provincial board? That is governed by the civil code, Article 1403. That is an unenforceable contract. And the civil code provides an unenforceable can be ratified expressly or impliedly. And therefore, when the provincial board passed the resolution authorizing the governor to assign that contract to a new foundation that is ratification. And then you have this case of Governor Gwendolyn Garcia of Cebu. She entered into infrastructure contracts without an enabling resolution from the provincial board. However, she said, you know, they did not pass the budget for this year. And under the law, the budget is automatically reenacted. And in the old budget, there was money for, uh, for public works. So, the, this authorization to this spend money found in that reenacted budget serves as authorization to sign to sign that contract. The court said no. The law provides you need a prior authorization from the provincial board before you can sign the contract. Now, but at the time you signed that, it was there was no budget for that year. Instead, the budget was automatically reenacted. Now, the court said, when you have a reenacted budget, it does not mean that every item in the previous budget is reenacted also. It's only the appropriation for salaries and obligations which are automatically reenacted. Now, that means the law, when you have the Philippine Ports Authority, when they charge uh, the harbor pilots a certain amount of the fees that they collect from the vessels that patronize the services. Now, apparently, some, many instances, the pilots do not pay. So what they did is that they passed a re regulation for requiring the vessels to withhold from the payment due the pilots the amount that should be paid to the Philippine Ports Authority and then the money should be turned over to the Philippine Ports Authority. And so the, this was questioned. But the court said the law gives the Philippine Port Authority to impose these fees for the services rendered by the pilots. And 
And this authority includes the authority to adopt means in order to collect the fee. So this is merely a device to collect the fee. No. Remember what happened with this British American tobacco. They were complaining about the tax on cigarettes, which was supposed to be based on a survey supposed to be made as to what the uh, market price of cigarette they, they would fall under a bracket based on the price. Now, the trouble is because I'm Congressman Javier, who was the chair of the we already advised the lawyer who came from our office. When you come in for the first time, it's a survey for you. Iba ba ni yung presyo ng sigarilyo? Para mababa ang bracket ninyo. But they were stubborn, so they went to the luxury price. And now, they asked the BAR to make a new survey, and they were reclassified some of the lower bucket, the court said, no, you cannot do that because the law precisely pro prohibits reclassification. Precisely, Congress placed that there to, so that to avoid giving the bay the discretion to fool around with the tax rate because that's why the law provides only Congress to change the classification. So you cannot do that by regulation. Now, this is the B, this Interpol. Well, they were being investigated by the SEC for insider trading. And they said the proceedings were void because they were not contacted in accordance with the provisions of the Administrative Code regarding administrative proceedings. However, the court said those provisions are not applicable because what is involved here is not adjudication but investigation to find out whether or not the case should be found against you. Well, what is involved is investigatory power that procedure for adjudication will not apply. Then, from the doctrine of exhaustion, the remedies. The court said from the decision by local water utilities administration, you can appeal. The National Water Resources Board, and therefore, it would be violation of the doctrine of exhaustion remedies to go to court after that. You should avail yourself of that remedy. And now, the court has said this doctrine of exhaustion applies in defining the what is the proper relationship between admissive agencies and the judiciary. So it's admissive agency vis-a-vis the courts. It does not apply intra-administrative uh, structure because this involved a police officer who was ordered dismissed for neglect of duty by the regional director of the Philippine National Police. So that was appealed and on appeal, 
the decision was reversed. Now, this regional director's decision was appealed, was reversed, appealed to the Secretary of Interior and Local Government. And the Secretary ruled against him. So the reversal of his decision was affirmed. And this fellow now appealed to the Civil Service Commission. Now, the complainant argued that you are wrong. You should have appealed first to the office of the President before appealing to the Civil Service Commission not to exhaust the remedies. The court said that doctrine applies when you talk about whether the case could be filed in the judiciary or not. It has, in other words, the agency vis-a-vis the courts. It defines the proper relationship between them, not intra-administrative machinery. And then when the, as I said, the Supreme Court has said, if an administrative case against a local elected official, if the penalty is removable, you should go to court. Now, so this was being questioned. Now, it was argued that the respondent did not exhaust the remedies. But the court said the issue there is purely legal, whether or not the administrative body could have jurisdiction over the case. When this involves an administrative case, the penalty is dismissal. The public officer should have the case of Justice Gregory O. The Sandigan Bayan, a case which was a Supreme Court saying his decisions are void because he's not a natural born Filipino. But, and therefore, if he would continue sitting in Sandigan Bayan and deciding case, this should be void. The court said no, it would be a de facto officer, even if it turns out he's not a natural born Filipino. And therefore, his decisions would be, would be valid. Now, and time and again, the court has said, if the same act is the subject of a criminal case and a recent case, dismissal of the criminal case will not warrant dismissal also of the recent case. Because the quantum of evidence required is different. It may be he was acquitted because his guilt was not proven via reasonable doubt. But in this case, substantial evidence is sufficient. So it may be that the dismissal would be supported by substantial evidence. Now, of course, this fellow was retiring. And he wanted that in his, the computation of his retirement benefits. His services as director of the Manila Economic Cultural Office should be included in computing his retirement benefits. But the court said that Manila Economic Cultural Office is not a government-owned or controlled corporation with an original charter. So it's not part of the civil service. But you see, we don't have diplomatic relations with the government of Taiwan anymore. That so-called Manila Manila 
office, Manila Economic Cultural Office, that's the one that issues visas. That's the fig leaf that is being used to appease China. municipality for the driver. You know, the mayor he was going to the airport and he asked the driver to drive him to the airport using the truck of the municipality. There was a vehicular accident. And because of that, somebody died. And now, the mayor was being sued for damages. But the court said, is that the employer of that driver, that driver is an employee of the municipality. Simply because the mayor asked him to drive for him and bring to the airport and he was riding the vehicle, does not make him the employer. And therefore, he cannot be held liable for damages. Now, and then you have this case of former the Air Commissioner Lee Wai Wai Vincent's Chato. But you remember, he, she issued that circular saying the cigarettes, champion, the brand's champion, hope, and more are considered bearing foreign brand names and therefore subject to a higher tax bracket. Now, the Supreme Court said that was void because you are increasing the tax burden without conducting a public hearing as mandated by the Code of 1987. So when that circular was issued without conduct public hearing, there was denial of the process. And Portion Tobacco sued her for damages. And she argued that she acted in good faith, and therefore she could not be liable for damages. But then the Supreme Court, citing the other case of Carrasco, so said good faith is not a defense under this. But you will recall that Article 32 of the Civil Code provides that for violation of certain provisions of the Civil Code, damages can be recovered. And remember, the, CB, the Code Commission explained violations of RCUs. While the Revised Penal Code makes the violation some of them criminal, the violator may not always be convicted. And so the victim cannot get relief. And therefore, some alternative remedy must be available. And what is that? Action for damages. And the Code Commission therefore said that good faith should not be defense here. That's why, remember the case of Eduardo Coaco Jr., he had horses which won in the Philippine Championship 6 races. And then he was asking for the payment of his winnings. And the general manager, Carlos Coso, asked the PCGG, should I release his winnings? The PCGG said, no, our sequestration case is still pending. So Coaco sued Carlos Coso, violation of his right to property without due process. And the Supreme Court said, there is no reason to withhold the money. That is not ill-gotten wealth. That's not covered with sequestration. And Carlos Coso said, but I acted in good faith. But the court said, good faith is not the defense here. So when Chato invoked that as defense, the court said, that's not a valid defense. But then she filed a motion for consideration. The Supreme Court reconsidered its ruling. The court followed a different track. The court said, well, we have to distinguish in what capacity the rules were issued. It 
agency because public officers have various duties. They may be duties owing to the public in general or owing to specific private individuals. If what is involved is violation of the duty owed to the public in general, you cannot sue for damages. Because otherwise, if you will allow that, uh, the whole Filipino people can sue a public officer for damages. And nobody will enter the government service. So, the public will be sued when what is involved is the breach of a duty owed a private individual. I would imagine, for example, a lawyer of the public attorney's office grossly neglected the case for a the assistant public attorney's office, and because of that, the, the poor client lost all his belongings. Then I think this is a case where he can sue the lawyer, where that is therefore owed a specific individual. And so the court said, when Chato issued that regulation, it was in the performed duties owed the general public, and therefore you cannot, she cannot be sued for damages. Now, this election law. First, it is a case of candidacy. This is case. This involved two opposing candidates for mayor. Now, the respondent filed a case to disqualify the petitioner on the ground that he stated the certificate of candidacy that he had resided in his party for at least one year. But actually, he had never resided in the municipality. So he said that the certificate of be disqualified. No. And then he argued the petition was filed late because the petition to cancel certificate can see must be filed within five days after the last day to file certificates of candidacy. Now this is what Justice Natura said. We have to distinguish between a petition to cancel certificate of candidacy and a petition to cancel to disqualify a candidate. Said those are two different things. Now the petition here alleged that the respondent falsely stated that he had resided there for at least one year. Now the petition for cancellation certificate of candidacy is based on lack of qualification. It's not based on lack of qualification but false representation. Although the false representation may also refer to a qualification. Now and so failure so what is involved here is not a ground for disqualification. The court said when the petition refers to commission of a prohibited act or possession of being resident in a foreign country then that is where you have cancel certificate of candidacy. Now the court distinguished between the two. See a person is disqualified that is covered under section 68 and he cannot continue to be a candidate. But if a case of a candidate whose certificate is cancelled is treated as not a candidate at all. So the former can be substituted. The latter cannot be substituted. 
So they make that distinction. <laughs> and so, since the petition was filed under Section 78, that may be filed not later than 25 days for filing certificates of candidacy. So the petition was filed on time. First, to the case of this declaration state principles, uh, this basis conversion and development authority granted a end of the year allowance to their employees. Basis the provisions in Article 2 about protecting the general welfare of workers. Now the court said the court has to be, be held that the provisions in Article 2 do not create enforceable rights. There may be guidelines for legislation. The only exception is remember the, the, the provision in the case of OPOSA, the environmental protection. And then Many, there were many, many decisions in 2009, but some of many of them came in the latter part, the students, in October, the main decision October. No. No. Now, you have this ordinance in Manila. Well, you remember, this goes back to the case of Elmita Malate Hotel, Hotel Operators Incorporated. But there, this ordinance prohibited letting out a room more than twice a day. The court upheld it in that case on the ground that this is intended to protect public morals. Then, of course, these hotels afford secrecy. The customers, therefore, they have become clearing houses for adultery, fornication, and prostitution. Uh, the idea that to discourage so-called short time. 
Well, that was decided in 1980, 1967, by a that had been discovered at that time. <laughs> yeah, because you will recall, you know, the United States invaded Iraq and they not found any weapons of mass destruction. The only thing they found is that Saddam Hussein is using Bayakra <laughs> because he had problems with his biological weapons. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, apparently this ordinance was revived. At this time, Justice Tinga said it is void. It was said first, the premise of this, because the about uh, purpose is to protect public morals. But you see, the court said, so they, somebody said, it's an exercise of police power. In other words, the court uh, was said, you're assuming that they suddenly stay the potential for illicit purposes. No. He said that under the rational basis test, this ordinance will not pass faster because and you are assuming that uh, those people go there for, uh, for immoral purposes. Remember that uh, before the Supreme Court transferred the venue to Lazal, for one year, when Justice Kian chair to the Polytechnic University, the PUP, in Santa Mesa, usually bar examiners stayed in nearby hotels, but there were no hotels nearby there. Instead, you motels. So they stayed in the motels. And, and of course, deans welcome that because if a dean is in entering a motel, this exists in the number of school students going. <laughs> <laughs> now here the Supreme Court said again you are assuming precisely this is for you can have legitimate sexual behavior there there may be a married couple who may decide to go there they want to relieve old memories <laughs> or, or you may have a sometimes it happens there is a brown out and it's very hot. So the family may check in there because the rooms are air conditioned for the duration of the ground up. Or you may have somebody who is traveling, is on a long journey, and so he stops by the motel in order to, to shower, freshen up, and change to get a rest before he proceeds with, on, on his journey. So the court said that uh, it is absurd to assume that necessarily people going there are going there for illicit purposes. So the court is, is using this, uh, in other words, what you should do is enforce strictly the laws penalizing prostitution and, and drugs instead of impose this outright ban of getting other rules for, for the for twice a day. This beyond the cut off point. I don't know why this happened this way, but the vagrancy was challenged being unconstitutional for being arbitrary because remember they were penalizing loitering in a public place without this without a local person without visible means of support. And it was decided by the Vision Supreme Court. They said it should have been decided and bank because it involved the constitutional issue. And Judge Inara said it was valid, it's reasonable, he said, you know, because you saw the, uh, the, the, these people have no local reason to be loitering around, but you saw that this is a prelude to other activities, like you have your watch on car boys, you have uh, uh, thieves, kidnappers, blah, blah, blah. But you see, this is what policemen use to arrest people, never they can charge them with, any, with anything. Or is it for Agency, loitering around in a public place with no... And in these days of high unemployment, 
There are many people who are unemployed. You mean simply because they go out in public, they are committing a crime. <laughs> so then, this, you, you remember, I think a few years ago when uh, Teddy Boyloxin had his program assignment, there was this couple who came from the province and they arrived at Manila and so to pass the night, away, they stayed at the Rizal Park. Then they were arrested for vagrancy, and the wife was gone right by the policeman. Sometimes and I go home, I drive along Taft Avenue near Kalaw. You will see people sleeping down on the sidewalk. Even in our place, you see people sleeping down on the sidewalk. I mean, they don't want, they don't want to live that way. It's just a failure of government service. Remember that uh, the Cranese, so he said, I think it was Victor Hugo who uh, say, quoting that, you know, the law in its majesty prohibits both the rich and the poor from sleeping under the bridges. And then uh, there was this case, remember, one of the requisites for admitted due process that there must be substantial evidence to support the case. Now, this is a case where the Sangonia Kabataan officials found the case against Mr. Official for falsification. They argued that what there was supposed to be, the budget supposed to be prepared and then one of the documents required to be signed was called justification and this fellow who signed that indicated that there was no such barangay to which that Sangguliang Kabataan pertained. So they said falsification of public documents. Now this fellow denied that that is a signature, said signature that is a forgery. But the court said all the other documents that were prepared to support the budget signed by the indicated that there was such a barangay and that precisely an appropriation should be made for that barangay. So the court said that finding is not supported by substantial evidence. Therefore, it violates at least the due process. It's the only the first case I've come... Uh, I can recall where the court said that there was no substantial evidence to support the decision of the agency. Then, equal protection. Remember, when well, this involved the visiting forces agreement, remember the accused of Smith was convicted of pending appeal. He was given to the cause of the United States. And this was questioned about that this violated equal protection. Why he that instead he should be detained in Montelupa just like uh, others who are convicted. But the court said, no, there's a basis for the Distinction. Remember, he belongs to a foreign body of military officers, and it is that is recognized in international law that a country has no jurisdiction over the forces of a foreign army located in its territory with its consent. On the theory that if you were to submit the Troops of the, to the jurisdiction of the host country, 
the, you would you would have a situation where this soldier is faced with conflicting orders from his own country and from the country where he is deployed. And so it's only to the extent that by agreement the host country and his own country agrees agree that the host will have jurisdiction of him, that the host country can assert power over him. So there is the valid basis for a distinction. And then As I mentioned earlier, that the Supreme Court on a third motion for reconsidered the case of those 16 cities that were exempted from the minimum gross income requirement to become a city, although there is also pending reconsideration. said that 
the police authorities received a report that somebody was calling illegally cut number. So when they went to the, visit to the house of the petitioner, they saw the pieces of number there on, around, the, around the vicinity. So they seized that the court said that's valid. Prohibited articles in plain view. Because if you are authorized to cut number, you must have documents in your possession showing that you were authorized to do so. And this fellow could not, could not produce any document so that he was authorized to issue the... to, to cut thumb number. all these decisions about a person is caught in flagrant delivery possession of money or shabu, selling the shabu or some, well it could be arrested without a warrant and the search could be made without a warrant. Well, there was an informant who told the police officers that Ago was involved in selling shabu. So they hatched him to entrap him. So the informant went to go and bought the shabu. And he went back to the police and showed the shabu which uh, was sold to him. And well, Ago went inside the hospital. So the policeman said, well, you go inside and tell him that somebody bumped his car. So this fellow, on hearing that, came out and he was arrested. And he was now questioning the validity of his arrest. Now the court said that would be a valid under the second instance. An arrest made immediately after the commission of the crime. Although the policeman did not actually see the sale of the shabu, the informant turned over to them the shabu which he sold. So they, so they saw the shabu that was sold with their own eyes. And then this fellow was immediately arrested before that. I think this is the case that triggered that uh, dispute between Justice Brion and Justice Velasco. Justice Velasco wanted him acquitted and just Brio insisting that the conviction should be affirmed. Just remember the, this was decided by Judge Rosales uh, in Tanawan City. He was ambushed and killed because of this, because of this case. And apparently <coughs> this fellow found out that it was Justice Brion who was strongly pressing for affirmance of the conviction. And so Justice Brion started receiving death threats. And Justice Brion was saying that only five people inside the conference room, the five justices, and only Velasco was insisting on acquittal. He was the only one who had the motive to relay the information. It was Justice Brion was pushing for the appearance of the conviction. This one is a case of this uh, in I mean the D family there. Well, this registration had been criticizing this uh, family of politicians and when it applied to renew its permit, they said, well, you have to submit proof that your station is located in commercials 
Yeah. And not agricultural. So they got a certification to the Department of Agrarian Reform. That this is not agricultural. But I don't know, that is a forgery. That is pure use. They refuse to honor it. They, just, they shut down the registration. Now the Supreme Court said this was done because that registration being critical. So this is, this is clearly violation of freedom of press. And it ordered that moral damages be paid in huge amounts. Now, right away, this is this... shopping mall to provide free parking space. And this general did so. He, well, I think well, for reason that if they did not comply and the budget is up before the before the Senate, then Mr. Cayetano will be displeased and will make it tough for them. Now, the There is nothing in the National Building Code which provides that shopping centers should give free parking space. It provides that shoppers should provide parking space, but it does not say it should be free. And the court said you cannot impose that first. This cannot be a valid exercise of police power because you can only confiscate property in exercise when there is a present and urgent exigency. Uh, when you have, for example, uh, beef with mad cow disease, or chickens with chicken flu, or they have a dog with rubbish. <laughs> and this is when you require them to give free space, without, that is confiscation, that is expropriation without just compensation. So it costs a lot of money to build a parking building. Hundreds of millions of pesos. And the maintenance, you have to repaint them regularly because of the smoke from the tailpipes of cars. And then you have to light water, security guards. So you notice parking this will tell you to park your car facing the wall so that the smoke from the tailpipe will not affect the, the wall. And they pay real estate taxes on these parking buildings. Then this uh, right to counsel, the court said, well, It's not a ground for being denial by 
religion is right. The, the, the council adopted a wrong theory, which was adopted nearly denial as a defense, and that was rejected. But the court said you cannot see. But the simply with the theory adopted by the lawyer was rejected by the court that uh, the right to counsel was violated. And then this uh, right to be informed. Well, I think we, there's a tendency you now in the Supreme Court. Before the court has said, if the method of the commission crime is different from what was alleged, the accused cannot be convicted. Like they said, the information alleged rape was committed to the use of force, but what was proven is that the victim was mentally retarded and cannot be convicted. But now the court is now trying to drift in the other direction, saying that the accused can be convicted even the method of the commission is it's different if the accused did not check when that was proven. And, and before they have said that the right to be informed cannot be waived, so even the accused does not object, cannot be convicted. But that is what how they're saying, like this case where the was alleged that the accused committed rape to the use of force. But what was proven was that the victim was asleep and then that the accused uh, inserted his penis inside her mouth. But the court said he could be convicted when there was a variance in the method of the commission of the crime. And now, but then you have the case of Estrada. Illegal use of alias. Uh, the information alleged that he used the alias Jose Belarte on or about February 4 of 2000 or at some time prior or subsequent to that day. Now the court said, it says prior or up, that was end or after. So, the prosecution could still be available on any uh, separate days of the court said that violated the right to be informed. Then, Speedy trial, they just reiterate these rulings that, well, it only prohibits vexatious delays and that this is not a question of mechanical counting, that so many days lapse and therefore there is a uh, denial. So the court said, like, well, you have to consider the reasons why it was delayed. Now, and, and then, Jeopardy. Well, this involved police officers who were charged with murder before the Sandiga Bayan. And then they alleged that the San Diego Bayan had no jurisdiction but there was no allegation that the crimes were committed in relation to their office. So, the San Diego Bayan ordered that the information be amended to make that allegation. And so that was done. And now the policeman claimed double jeopardy. Well, the court said no, the case was not terminated, so you cannot claim double, double jeopardy.
like quite where you have this officer was given money. That is the end of the point. Now, what if this case or the Sandhya Mayan dismissed a case upon motion of the accused on the ground that the person failed to prove with sufficient evidence the guilt? And the Sandhya Mayan simply granted it. The court said the acquittal is not valid because the, the prosecution was never notified that such a motion had been filed and then the Sandhya Mayan granted it. So the prosecution was denied due process, was not given a chance to be heard on that issue and to prove that actually they were able to prove, to prove the guilt of the, of the accused. This case will be regional trial court. Originally came up decision convicting the accused of murder. And when the decision was promulgated, the respondents did not show up. Remember the rule in the rules of criminal procedure, if the accused does not show up in promulgation, he loses his right to appeal. So he did not show up. And then what happened? The accused filed a motion for reconsideration. And the court granted it and acquitted the accused. So the prosecution now questioned that and filed a petition for certiorari in the court of appeals. Now the court of appeals dismissed the petition. They know that if it were to grant the petition, the accused would be placed in double jeopardy. But the court rejected it. The court said, well, when the accused filed that motion, he had jumped bail, did not appear. And therefore, the court had no jurisdiction to entertain that motion for reconsideration. Because the motion for you are seeking a review of the decision. And therefore, the prosecution has denied due process. And that because the court had no jurisdiction. And therefore, the court said the acquittal was not valid. And then on citizenship, there was a case of somebody 
born in the United States of American father and Filipino mother. And so, he was given also by a document by the U.S. government as an American citizen. And then invoking the provision that you can uh, reacquire Philippines by simply repatriating and all of allegiance, he did that. And now he wanted to run for peace and it was being claimed, ah no, you cannot uh, run because you are, you did not renounce your American citizenship. And if you became a naturalized American citizen, and you want to run, you have to renounce it. But the court said that provision in the law is not applicable because he is a natural born Filipino. His mother is a Filipino. And therefore, he's a natural born Filipino. In other words, he never get dual citizenship. And since he's a natural born Filipino, he need not repatriate. And he did not therefore renounce his allegiance to the make that renunciation which is a condition for the repatriation to qualify the former Filipino to run for public office. Okay, it's almost right. So, well, we'll just finish this tomorrow so we should be able to finish this probably about two hours. I think we'll assign it from one o'clock, no? Okay. Is one o'clock all right with you? Huh? Okay. What, what's your schedule you can you anyway? You have money in the morning also? Huh? Okay, what about the other? So the traffic always happens here during Saturday because of these vans, etc. Okay, we'll finish this off.